Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Mindy here, and today I'm gonna to talk about fragrances that I will not be adding to my collection. For one reason or another, they just simply didn't work out for me. And what I've been doing lately is using a little bit more discretion on what I'm adding to my collection. I don't wanna add fragrances unless they're an absolute love, because if I do, I probably won't wear them. I'm also sampling before I buy at this point, just simply because I've had so many blind buy fails at this point, I would prefer not spending the money on the fragrances if they may not work out for me. So with that being said, I fully recognize that a masterpiece to me may be a fail to you or vice versa. I'm simply sharing the fragrances that didn't work out for me in the event that it might help you out in making a decision in the fragrances that you're looking to buy. So the fragrances that I'm talking about today are either heavily hyped or they're wildly loved fragrances that didn't work out for me. And so take it with a grain of salt, definitely research fragrances, sample them yourselves and see if they're for you. But unfortunately these didn't work out for me. So without further ado, let's get started. The first fragrance that I'm going to talk about today is Chanel No. 5 Eau Premier. And this one absolutely gutted me. I thought for sure this fragrance would work out for me because while I'm not a Chanel No. 5 fan, I've seen so many people say that this is their Chanel No. 5. In fact, I have a rule that I usually buy 2 milliliter decants. I do that for a variety of reasons. One, because I feel like it's enough to get you by to see if you like a fragrance. Two, it's not over buying in the event that you don't like a fragrance. It doesn't leave you with a huge sample. And third, I feel like it's enough to spray it a few times and test that on your skin um, to evaluate it if you're not sure from the first spray. Now in this case, I bought one of the larger samples simply because I thought, I need this to get me by for a while until I can buy the full bottle. I know I'm going to love it, but that just wasn't the case, unfortunately. Now, to me, I get a soapy woodiness. It is very similar to Chanel No. 5, and I agree with a lot of people who say that this is sort of a softer version. There's something in this that my nose translates as cloying or difficult to appreciate and my initial gut reaction tells me that's probably the aldehydes. I have never come across a fragrance with aldehydes that I love yet, and I wish I would. I wanna keep trying them and finding if there is one for me, um, but Juke LeBain did not work out for me. Lazy Sunday Morning, I'm trying to think if there are others. Metal Leak, just didn't care for that fragrance either. I think a lot of people would like Juke LeBain. It is a soft fragrance but the aldehydic vibe just doesn't seem to work with me yet. I've mentioned before, you know, I just have a type. I like warm, cozy gourmands, and that sort of soapy vibe that you get from an aldehyde just doesn't always work out for me. There's one called Enchanted Forest by the Vagabond Prince that I'm really interested in trying because I've seen a lot of people talk about that and there are aldehydes in that. Definitely one that I'm interested in checking out. But for now, Chanel No. 5 Eau Premier didn't work out for me. Again, it's softer, definitely more pleasing to my nose than the original Chanel No. 5. I think it is a pretty scent, and this would probably be one that I could appreciate on somebody else, but not one that I love, not one that I would reach for, not one that I would gravitate towards. And so sadly, I will not be adding this Chanel No. 5 into my collection. Chanel No. 5 is a classic. I still want to explore potential other flankers. I've tried the low in a store. Um, it didn't appeal to me either, um, but I think there's a couple others, maybe one in a red bottle. I don't know. Um, there's, there might be a couple others that I can continue to try out, uh, but for now, it's a no, it's a pass for me, sadly. Okay, the next fragrance that I want to talk about that is very hyped, that is very loved, is YSL Lead. And I have a sample here. I've been playing with the fragrance. I sprayed it in my car one time, left the sample in the car, and got um, the opportunity to smell it for days in my car before I pulled it out. And while I do like this fragrance, it is not a love for me. So 
I like Mon Guerlain. I like um, sort of those baby magic fragrances that have that lavender vibe in them. The lavender in this fragrance just didn't work for me. What I get from this is some white florals. I get the lavender. It is a soft, it is a very pretty, it's a classy, elegant scent. Um, but what it reminds me of sometimes is a fabric softener. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just um, a fresh, sort of clean scent that I appreciate. But again, I don't love it. And for me to add fragrances into my collection, I have to love them. I've tested the Intense on my skin a couple times as well, and I haven't been able to fall for that one either. I'm gonna keep trying that one out also, but for now, these are not fragrances that I would want to add to my collection. Now, one thing I found over time is that I generally don't lean towards fragrances that have a prominent white floral note without having some sort of sweetness to them. And you know, I don't get a lot of sweetness from this fragrance, and that might be why um, this isn't one that I totally gravitate towards. Again, I think this is sophisticated, it's classy, absolutely perfect for a business setting. I would love this on other people. I enjoyed the scent in my car for days, um, just didn't love, love it. And for me to add fragrances, I gotta love them at this point. So YSL Leave, not adding to my collection, but definitely a nice scent that I think people should check out to see if it's for them. Okay, the next fragrance that I'm gonna talk about is Deja Vu White Flower, it may be called 57 by Kaoli. And this is another one that is white floral dominant, and this is a very beautiful scent. If you like white florals, you have got to get your nose on this fragrance. I do like it, I do appreciate it, but what I've found with white florals is that I tend to prefer them to be not sort of the most prominent accord in a fragrance, maybe more so in the middle, balanced out with sort of a gourmand vibe or a heavy sweetness. That tends to be the white floral that I gravitate towards. An example of that would be Soleil Cristal by La Via Belle. I really love this fragrance. It does have white florals, but it's balanced out for me in a way such that I absolutely love. Other gourmand-like fragrances that I tend to lean towards with white florals in them, Coco Mademoiselle, La Via Belle Intense, uh, Chanel Chance, Flower Bomb. I like Deja Vu White Flower. It is a very beautiful scent, and I think a lot of people would really enjoy this, but it is white floral heavy for me, and not necessarily one that I would absolutely love to wear myself, one I'd like to smell on other people. Now in the mid, the notes are tuberose, Indian jasmine, and orange blossom. So just by that, you can tell that there are a lot of white florals in this. And if you like that, you will love this fragrance. If you're a huge fan of white florals, you definitely need to get your nose on Deja Vu White Flower. You may absolutely love this fragrance. Again, very loved in the fragrance community. For me, what I found with Kaoli Vanilla 28, that was not a love at first sniff. It grew on me, so I'm not giving up on this fragrance, but I've definitely decided in the near term this is one that I won't be adding to my collection. I've sampled it long enough to know that um, I probably wouldn't reach for this above other fragrances that are in my collection, so not for me at this point in time. Again, Deja Vu White Flower by Kaoli. Okay, next up is Idol by Lancome. And I've mentioned in the past that I've never come across a Lancome fragrance that I didn't love, and this one sort of changed that for me. Now, I really like the fragrance. It is a strong like for me. It's classy, it's sophisticated. It's all of those things that somebody who really appreciates floral heavy fragrances would like, but this one isn't a total love for me. So again, one that I won't be adding to my collection. Just like Lieb and Deja Vu White Flower, I think this fragrance would be really nice in an office or business setting. This is sort of an anytime, any place fragrance that you could wear. You could wear it to dinner, you could wear it to the movies. It really is a pleasant fragrance. It's a nice scent. It's slightly sweet, it's slightly fruity, it's rose heavy, it's musky, and it's just pretty, but this is not one that I've gravitated enough for it to be a love for me, and so again, not one that I would be pulling into my collection. Now one of the things about this fragrance is that the floral aspect does tend to 
overpower the fragrance for me. I mentioned that it's fruity and so there's pear and bergamot at the top. And then in the mid is Turkish Rose, Rose de Mai, Indian Jasmine, and then at the base is White Musk and Vanilla. And I do like the fruitiness, I like the vanillic aspect of this fragrance, but I'm just not crazy about the floral component that is, that is fairly heavy in this fragrance. So if you like floral heavy fragrances that have an aspect of sweetness and muskiness and fruitiness, I really think that you'd like this fragrance. But again, not one that's for me, not one that I'll be pulling in. That is Idol by Lancome. Okay, this is a really hard video to film because I know these are very loved, very hyped fragrances that most people appreciate and really enjoy. The next fragrance that I'll talk about is Delina La Rose by Parfum Samarly. And this is one I've spoken about before on my channel and unfortunately one that is not a complete love for me. Now, this fragrance absolutely maintains that underlying D DNA from the Delina fragrance but it sort of takes a different route. It goes a little bit fresh, it goes a little bit aquatic, and I think a lot of people would really love that. I like it, I don't absolutely love it. And it is sort of reminiscent of something that you might smell in a hotel lobby. Um, it's very beautiful, it's uplifting, it's sort of sparkling. Again, it's fresh and it has that sweetness, a little bit of sourness that you get from the original Delina, but not to the same extent. Just a really nice fragrance. But for me, after wearing this on my skin for a half a day, I really didn't think that this is one that I would move forward with a full bottle on because I have a strong preference for the original Delina. For me, I have Lady Diana by Alexandria Fragrances. It's so similar to the original Delina that I haven't felt compelled to buy the original Delina, but I would say that for me, I lean towards that original Delina scent profile. This Delina La Rose would be incredible for the spring. For somebody who loves this scent profile, I definitely think this is one you should sample, consider picking up. I think a lot of people would really enjoy this, but not one that I'm gonna be moving forward with in my collection, simply for the fact that I prefer the original Delina, and I'm not crazy about the floral, aquatic nature of this fragrance. Again, a lot of people will like it, but not for me. That is Delina La Rose by Parfums de Marley. All right, this might be the fragrance that makes me lose any credibility I may have established in the past. This one is sort of the epitome of a gourmand and it is Elixir Charnel Gourmand Coquine by Guerlain. And this is a heavily loved gourmand fragrance. I might be letting my gourmand fragrance friends down with this one, but I've tried it a few times and at this point it is still not a love for me. Now from this fragrance I get warmth, I get coziness, there is spiciness in this fragrance and a little bit of booziness, sort of like you get um, in Spiritueuse Duble Vanille. It's almost like the dark chocolate cousin of, of Spiritueuse Duble Vanille, which I absolutely love. I just haven't had uh, Gourmand Coquine turn into a love for me yet. Now I think what I'm having trouble with in this fragrance is that spicy aspect. I tend to enjoy boozy fragrances and this does sort of smell like a dark chocolate liqueur. Um, so from that aspect, it is a very nice alluring fragrance, but I just don't absolutely love it because of that spiciness. At least that's what I'm attributing it to. In this fragrance, there is dark chocolate, cacao, rum, vanilla, spices, rose, and pepper. So again, you can kind of see that there is a spicy component to this fragrance, and I think one that I don't absolutely love. I am a huge fan of chocolate gourmand fragrances. I think I'm gonna start wearing them more and adding more to my collection simply because I wanna smell like chocolate and maybe that will avert me from eating so much chocolate. I love Hugo Boss' The Scent Private Accord. I really like Angel Muse. It has a little bit of that chocolatey vibe to it as well. Another fragrance that gives me a little bit of a sort of chocolatey vibe is La Nuit Trésor a la Folie. Absolutely love this one but I haven't had that sensation of pure love with 
gourmand cooking yet and I'm just not ready to add it to my collection. Part of that is simply because of the price point. If you're going to bring in one of the Lay Elixirs fragrances into your collection, they are priced at a point that is really high and you wanna make sure that you love them. Even with some of the sales that a Neiman Marcus will do at $50 off, this fragrance is still very heavily priced and you wanna make sure, at least for me, I wanna make sure that it's a complete love. I'm gonna wear it, I'm gonna reach for it if I'm gonna be able to drop that sort of money on it. And that's not the case yet with this fragrance. Now when I think of Gourmand Coquine, I do think it is a more mature fragrance and I don't mean that in a bad way. It has a level of sophistication that some of my other chocolate fragrances do not have. So if that appeals to you, you should get your nose on this one because I do find it classy and elegant, just not one I'm ready to add at this point. So that is Elixir Charnel Gourmand Coquine by Guerlain. Now another very talked about fragrance in recent weeks and months is Ball de Freak by Byredo. And this is a very pleasant smelling fragrance, one that I like. It is heavily aromatic, it has a lemony, citrusy vibe to it, and it smells very nice. Completely understand why people mention getting a happy vibe from this, because I get that as well. This is one that I would consider wearing on a vacation. You want to be in a great mood on vacation. If I were going to Las Vegas or if I were going to Florida, something fun like that, this might be a fragrance that I would reach for. Now, just a disclaimer here that the citrusy, aromatic fragrance genre is not really my go-to. Again, I have a type, and so this fragrance is really nice. It heavily fits that quality. It is a beautiful scent. But for me, I'm not reaching for citruses on a regular basis. I have Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue in my collection, and these are not the same in any way, shape, or form. But this is a citrusy fragrance that I find myself reaching for in the summer. From time to time, it is an easy reach if you want that fresh, classy, sophisticated, but sort of light, fresh feel. It's an awesome fragrance, but I'm not reaching for it very much because I don't necessarily crave that genre of fragrances. So with Ball d'Afrique, this is a really, really nice scent, but not one that I would want to reach for a lot. Now, I wanted to get a second opinion on this one, so I asked my husband to smell it this morning, and what he immediately picked up from this was sort of a lemony, soapy vibe. And once he mentioned that, I couldn't get past it. If you are a citrus aromatic fragrance fan, you absolutely have to get your nose on this fragrance because I do think you're gonna enjoy it. I think you might like it. It's probably gonna be a love at first snip. I enjoy it, but just not for me at this point in time. Definitely interested to see how my likes, my preferences, tastes evolve. Maybe I do start to gravitate towards this fragrance profile more, but for now, that's not the case. I also really want to find my perfect Byredo fragrance. I've tried Gypsy Water and I really like that one. Kind of get my nose on a couple of the others and see which one I like the most. But for now, Bald Freak is not for me. I think a lot of people would love it, but I will not be moving forward. Okay, the next fragrance that I want to talk about is Baccarat Rouge 540 by Maison Francis Kirkjean. And I do really like this fragrance. This one may actually be borderline love to me. This fragrance has um, this unique quality. It's stunning, it's perfectly unisex, and there's some woodiness, some warmth. To my nose, I actually get the slightest hint of fruit crunch vibe from it. I mentioned this in the past. I saw it one time that Baccarat Rouge by 40 smelled like Kool-Aid to somebody, and it doesn't smell like Kool-Aid to me, but once I saw that, it did smell like fruit punch, and I can't quite get that out of my head yet. I do really enjoy this fragrance, and I've gone to the Maison Francis Kirkjohn website probably five to 10 times at this point, sat on the website, came so close to adding it to my cart, but I just didn't want to pull the trigger at the price point. Another thing with Baccarat Rouge 540, why I've wavered so many times is that I like the original 540, but I also really like the x -Straight. And I'm not exactly sure which one I like the most at this point. I think it's the x -Straight. I have gone back and forth on this as well. And one thing that I have done is I've brought Interplay x by Alexandria Fragrances into my collection. 
And I think this is such a well done dupe of the Baccarat Rouge 540X straight that it's satisfying that need for me to add the original Baccarat Rouge 540 or the X straight version into my collection. This one I wear from time to time. I absolutely love wearing it. It scratches that itch for me. And also the reason why I don't know that I would add Baccarat Rouge to my collection. I don't know if I want to drop that kind of money on fragrance. Okay, for me, there is sort of an opportunity cost aspect to buying Baccarat Rouge 540, and it comes down to if I spend that kind of money on this particular fragrance, then I miss out on buying a whole bunch of other fragrances or stocks or whatever. And for me, again, this Alexandria fragrance option is filling that void, and I don't feel the need or the urge to move forward with Baccarat Rouge 540 at this point in time. That could change. I might go out to the website another five to 10 times and consider buying it. But for now, that's just not gonna happen. Moving into the summer months, I think this one is going to be the one I reach for. I think I'll be completely content with this one in my collection. So not gonna be adding it at this point in time. We'll see what the future holds. Definitely going to have an ongoing interest in this fragrance because it's stunning, it's beautiful, and it's well-loved. Thank you all for watching my video. I really appreciate you guys. I absolutely love engaging with you guys in the comments section below. I'm wishing you a very happy, healthy, and fun weekend. And if you celebrate Easter, I hope it's a wonderful time for you. I hope you get to hold your loved ones near, and I hope you enjoy that time with the family if you get it. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.